Hello, everyone. This is Christine Lundblad of Quilting Arts Magazine, and I'm delighted to have Teresa Durye Wong joining me today. Teresa is a quilter and a lecturer and a writer and a researcher, and she has written some marvelous books recently. And her most recent book is Sewing and Survival. I just finished it this morning. It is fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed it a great deal, Teresa. It's wonderful. So welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad that you are able to speak with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you were available. Yeah. Um, tell just tell me a little bit about um, kind of your quilting background and how you got to this point here. Yeah, I started quilting a long time ago. Um, uh, probably more than 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had a corporate day job for a long time. And um, in 2013, um, I left that job and I decided it was time to do something that I was passionate about mm -hmm. instead of working for, you know, somebody else. So that's when I started, um, decided I wanted to write and write books and be more involved in the quilt industry. So um, that's when I set out to um, my first topic was the history of quilting in Japan. Mm. Yes. And then you had that fabulous book about cotton. Yes. History. Yeah. And so I spent a couple of years um, researching Japanese quilt history and textile history and indigo. And then um, I wrote two books on that topic. Yeah. And um, and then I decided that was so fascinating that I wanted to write about American cotton because I had been studying this um, cotton in Japan for so long. And so I decided to do more. And I wrote another book about um, American cotton. Um, that book was really popular and has sold out. I'm excited to say. Oh, wow. That's great. That's yeah. wonderful. Um, so this this is a really interesting and thoughtful and, and very well, well done book, Teresa. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I just, uh, tell us a little bit kind of about what piqued your interest to create this book, this subject. As a, you know, as a researcher, I was so fascinated to learn about Japan's history and I learned so much. And, um, so many people that I was in contact with told me they learned a lot by reading my history. Cause you know, sometimes outsiders can be, um, really observant, um, mm -hmm. and notice things that maybe you living the everyday life. So I just thought, you know, I had made so many trips to Japan and I was so fulfilled by that, but I thought I really should study my own country. Mm -hmm. And I had, I was aware of uh, the making of star quilts in Native mm. American communities. And so that's really kind of what piqued my interest. I got started on that. Wow. And um, I've been really researching this topic for over three years. And so I just really learned so much more about the history of going back into the 19th century mm -hmm. when quilting first took hold in Native American communities and mm -hmm. just really expanded that all the way up until today and what's happening um, with quilt making in, in the Native American and indigenous communities. Yeah, and it's it's fascinating. I love your myth busting too that that you had in there as well. Um, yeah, we do hold a lot of myths. You know, yeah. a lot of us, myself, were poorly educated. Yeah. I feel like in terms of history in general and definitely any uh, history about people of color or minority communities or immigrant communities, um, very, very poorly educated. So a lot of the things that I knew were wrong. Right. Um, and I think a lot of, not, not that I knew, a lot of things that I was taught. So yeah. I think in quilting uh, history, it's almost um, uh, so many people are unaware of this part of the history. And, and what they do know is also uh, maybe just, you know, uh, a small portion of the story. Right, right. That's... It is so you have to myth bust, right? Because right, right, and even just knowing the 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 breadth of the number of nations and communities of of, of native people, and yes, I don't know that people are all that aware. We 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 our our knowledge has been limited in the past, at least. Or our, I agree with yeah. you. We didn't learn very much in school, uh, yeah. other than what what is seemingly black and white. Right. Almost. History was always taught to me all the way through college as like learning dates, 
Like that was the most important thing was to know the date that something happened. Right. And that's the least important thing. <laughs> I mean, there's you need to know the story of what happened, right? Yeah. The story is fascinating. And if you know the story, you'll get interested in what happened. You'll remember the date. <laughs> Right. Very well said. And I and I love that example that you had about the manifest destiny yeah. um, essay. It would, was just what we, what we knew at the time or what we were taught. At the time. That's right. Yeah. Um, another thing I really enjoyed was um, you were talking about the geometric patterns and the iconography and how that um, feeds into the iconography of, of native people and how they express themselves and, um, so that's maybe a little bit about maybe how Native folks and non-Native folks are, are different in their quilting of, say, a star pattern. But uh, is there anything about about that that, um, you know, that that is worth talking about? Um, yeah, so, I mean, the star quilt, I, our, uh, the history of star quilts is a prominent part of, of this new book, Sewing and Survival. Mm -hmm. um, and because they're very... Uh, important in Native American communities were and are. And um, for 150 years, you know, we uh, um, associate the star, non-Native quilters think of the, the star pattern. We're talking about an eight-pointed star. We call it um, the Lone Star or the Star of Bethlehem. Yes. And, and consider it kind of a Western generated or American, maybe European generated uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. But um, it, this idea of the iconography of an eight-pointed star existed in Native communities long before uh, it was made into quilts. And so the star itself in, in Native American indigenous communities, it's just called a star quilt. Yeah. Um, they, you know, don't assign these sort of Western names that a lot of non-Native quilters would use. So star quilts are very, very prominent um, and still very popular today. They have been uh, like the primary um, object that is given away in mm -hmm. ceremonies um, for hundreds of years into today. Um, originally in uh, communities that were in the north, the buffalo would have been, um, you know, a valued animal. They used every part of the buffalo and the buffalo hides were very valuable and those would be given away and sort of wrapped around the recipient's shoulders. Mm -hmm. And as the buffalo was decimated and as quilting took hold, the quilts became replacement objects. So star quilts would be used to wrap around the shoulders of people that you're giving things away to. So this would happen when uh, babies are born, when babies have a naming ceremony, graduations, weddings, funerals, um, all kinds of events for political leaders and athletes. Um, they're often draped in star quilts. And this is a really, really rich tradition that goes on all over America today. That's fantastic. You have some fantastic uh, photography in the book too um, that show those those beautiful ceremonies of being presented with these quilts. And that's yes, it's so fantastic. Um, it's, it's kind of you know it's this is an important book. I think for both quilters and non-quilters alike to understand a little more about the native community. And, and, and this is really very important and, and a very enjoyable, enjoyable book. Thank you. I mean, I do think it is appealing for even non-quilters because we tend to think of America's uh, Native American community as being a community. Right. And it's, you know, it's really 500 or 600 or more different communities with, you know, different traditions and different religions and different languages and different ways of dress yeah. and um, different foods. And, um, you know, so quilting is just as diverse as that. And it's something that that's part of um, you know, it's definitely what part of what I learned in this process mm. of researching and really try to understand this richness all across America. Yes, truly a richness. I had no idea of of that richness. And thank you. Thank you for educating me. <laughs> <laughs>
Fabulous book. This has really been terrific. I um, I really appreciate you taking the time, Teresa, telling us about this fabulous story. I think everybody needs to read this. The pictures, the photography is beautiful. They're nice and big. It's, Thank you. It's yeah. There's over sixty okay. quilts and over a hundred photos. A lot of them historical. Yeah, uh, never yeah, seen yeah. Before. Yeah, that that was lovely to see. And talk, as as you're talking about the ceremony going back hundreds of years. Yes, these were happening when photography had just been yep. invented. They, Absolutely. They, and they had been doing it. So it's fabulous to see. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Thank you. And uh, I hope you uh, write something really wonderful again. I'll, I'll be looking for your next book. <laughs> Check back in a couple years. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh-huh.